the look of the film, um, the look of its projection of the future was so uh, accurate in so many ways that you can watch it today and it doesn't seem dated. I mean, it seems dated in some aspects, but when it comes to the look of the technology, it seems very contemporary. And this was not some accident or fluke. I mean, the Kubrick and Clark, Stanley Kubrick, the director, and Arthur C. Clark, who collaborated on the story for four years <laughs> with Stanley Kubrick, consulted with the best people in the business. Uh, they consulted, for example, with IBM, Bell Labs. The flat screens came from a suggestion from Bell Labs. The supercomputer um, that you can, you can go into the brain room of uh, was, a, was a suggestion from IBM. So they went to the best people in the business and they listened carefully to them. Now, we've got to talk about how the AI system on board the spacecraft um, in the movie 2001, which is such a central character, you know, 50 years on, we still can't shake the image of Hal and that red gaze. You know, why is it that Hal has seared itself into our collective consciousness? Well, I think that the scene in which the astronaut, the surviving astronaut Dave Bowman, deprograms the computer, which has killed off the rest of the crew, while Hal is pleading for his life, is one of the most powerful scenes ever put on film. And so separate from the genre of science fiction uh, and the larger narrative arc, although, of course, the narrative arc is necessary for that scene to have, as much power it, uh, as it does, I think that is the the reason why one of the one of the major reasons why Hal continues to fascinate us. But apart from that, um, um, the the predictions about artificial intelligence within the film also, I mean, are prescient uh, in many ways. And again, you know, <laughs> uh, they went to the best people in the business. That means. Kubrick and Clark. For example, Marvin Minsky, co-founder of the MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab, was a consultant throughout the project. Uh, so was I.J. Good, the um, mathematician uh, who worked uh, with Alan Turing in the Bletchley Park um, Codebreakers uh, group. Spoiler alert, and you spoiled the ending of the movie just now, just in case anyone out there still haven't seen it yet. But in 2001, how the AI is defeated by Dave, but Knowing the pace, the sophistication, the development of, of AI today, do you think that kind of ending is now unlikely? That, that it will get increasingly harder for human beings to be able to defeat an AI like how? Well, so that is one of the core questions that a lot of people are grappling with. People like Elon Musk, um, et cetera, are talking about, have been talking about this, the late Stephen Hawking. Uh, what will happen when we have a self-improving artificial intelligence that can um, outstrip us on many levels when it comes to the speed of, of thought, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I think Elon Musk was warning that we might end up becoming sort of like house cats <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to the AI. We'll see, obviously, and we may see sooner than we think, um, and maybe there will be no need to defeat anything. But um, as my uh, piece that I wrote in the New York Times recently argued, um, you know, it depends on who controls the AI. Uh, what we have today is a kind of um, incremental arrival of um, machine intelligence used for manipulation, purposes of manipulation. Um, it's also being used for positive purposes, meaning research into new pharmaceutical products, et cetera. But um, what happened with Cambridge Analytica and Facebook is a warning sign of what, what may be to come.